Hi, it's Steve Riley. Welcome to this episode of Great Practice, Great Life. Today, I am here with some terrific friends who are part of an experiment, a thought experiment that we've been doing that is either loved or hated or scary, depending on where you are in our community. And so today, today we're talking about the possibility of what we've nicknamed bonus here. So today I have Shelly Goff, I have Ad Goff, and of course, Vincent Bonazzoli, Vinny, and Mr. Power. So welcome to the podcast, everybody. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Steve. So Steve, you and I have been playing with it, you much longer than I, have been playing with this question of health span, lifespan, uh, extending the quality and the length of our life for quite a while, you more so than I. And you and I, out of the joy and the excitement of discussing that, thought it would be a brilliant idea of introducing this to the Atticus community because we love it so much and we found so much value out of it. Shelly, I know that all of you attended, were some of the people that attended the workshop Steve and I did on this. So I'm curious, you're, you're successful in running a law firm, you're successful in your lives. Why go to a workshop on longevity or bonus years? What, what had you decide to come to that? And I'm only curious because a lot of people were driven away. <laughs> they just said, I want nothing to do with this. What attracted you to it? I was attracted uh, almost immediately when, when Steve mentioned it. I think I was probably the first one to, to say, sign me up. Um, and I'm at a point where I was staring at retirement. I uh, didn't feel real well, um, struggled with my weight. Um, struggled with my eating patterns. I was not regularly exercising. And I was finding that uh, doing a full day at the office, I was pretty much trash when I got home. Um, so this was when it was mentioned that, look, you, you, you could live to be 120. That means I'm only middle age. That gave me this, this, um, spark to get back up off the couch i don't i'm not ready to die i'm i want i this is i'm finally at a place in my life where we can enjoy ourselves why spend it on the couch being sick i'd like you to talk about your experience but i'd also like you to pass to the audience the listeners what were the strategies that you put in place why you chose those strategies and what were some of the outcomes, if that makes sense. Okay. So one of the strategies that I put into place was I started um, really focusing on my sleep. I was sleeping maybe three to four hours a night. I was in bed longer than that, but I wasn't sleeping. I would wake up 2 30, 3 a.m. and not be able to go back to sleep. Um, things rolling around in my head, um, couldn't turn it off. And so I one of the things that I did was um I sat down and tried to figure out what it was about my sleep that I could fix. Um, and it kind of rolled into some other things too, like my diet, but Focusing on making myself sleep better changed my ability to focus during the day and get my work done so I could get out of there and do these other things. Um, a lot more exercise, watching my diet. Um, I've changed my diet around to where I eat my largest meal at noon and then only eat what I need to satisfy my hunger at night um, and going to bed without that big lump in my stomach from too much. Because frankly, Ad and I are very, very good cooks and we really like to cook good stuff. Ad is the king of sauces and they're not low calorie sauces. <laughs> so we, um, we, we had to uh, change how we ate. Doing that, helped with my sleep. 
Also being more consistent with my exercise helped with my sleep. We work out at least five days a week um, doing judo or jiu-jitsu. Um, we also do some resistance band uh, weight weights, whatever you want to call them, exercises. And I think the physical activity also helped the sleep. But I think overall, the biggest thing for me was getting my sleep under control. I now get six, seven, and on weekends, eight hours of sleep a night. That's absolutely perfect. Okay. So I want to I want to clarify one thing, then I'm going to come back to you to talk about what you consider the results. You started this, and I was talking to you before you came on because you've you've actually lost weight. You mm -hmm. look younger. So talk to us about some of the benefits that you think these shifts have produced for you. Well, I, I'm 66. Um, I have so much more energy than I did. Um, I feel better. Um, I still have some stomach issues, but not like I did. Uh, I think the consistency in the diet really helped that. Cutting back on alcohol really helped that. Um, I feel stronger. I don't feel like I'm ready to retire. I don't feel like that at all. Um, before, it was kind of like, well, yeah, you know, guess what? It's coming and you're just going to have to deal with it. Now it's like, it's going to come when I decide it comes. And it's not now. Um, so I think my mindset changed as my physical state got better. It has helped, I think, tremendously in my work. Because as I said before, I can focus more. Uh, and it also, because we're working out so much, I can't stay at the office late. Yeah. The, the team that are, are you know, we the, the jiu-jitsu and judo class starts at a time, 6.15 or 6.30, depending on the class. And they don't wait for you. So if you're going to go, you've got to get up off your desk and you've got to go, which means I've got to get my stuff done during the day. Ed and Shelly, um, any shifts for you in that area, in the social network, the community building, that sort of thing? Any shifts for you in that area? Oh, yeah. Shelly can really speak to that. Well, I, I, there's not a lot of women my age on the mat. Doing judo or jujitsu. Right. Most of the women, well, all of the all of the people in our dojo, other than Ad and I, are under forty. Probably. Our coach is thirty-seven. Um, I don't know that there's anybody over the age of forty, and many of the people are in their early twenties, and there's some kids too that that are bigger kids that work out with the, uh, with the adults, um, that are in their teens. But so I've made friends with women who are in their uh, late twenties, early thirties. Um, and it's, they don't treat me like an old lady. They treat me like I am a peer. And, uh, when we roll, they don't take it easy on me at all. Um, but these people have become fast friends, um, somebody that you feel like you could call and say, I need help. And they would come help you. We, we've, we've brought them out to the house. We, we sponsor the Christmas party for the uh, team at the house. Um, we go to the, uh, fights. Uh, we just had uh, a number of our guys uh, at a UFC fight on Saturday. It was an absolute blast. We had, what, seven people on the card of, out of 17 fights or something like that. It was a blast. If there's a possibility that I might have better quality of life, a better lifespan in the future, what's one piece of advice that you would say, do this to add or at least increase the probability of bonus years to your life. Shelly? Okay. Okay. Mine is get off the couch and move. Um, the old adage, you know, it's, it's, it's cut back what you eat, move more. I think it's move. Get moving. Keep your, 
keep your body moving, keep your joints lubricated by exercise. If it's just walking and doing some strength training, do something. And it's not just fixing your body. It also focuses your mind in kind of a weird way. You're sending signals to your whole body like, hey, look, we're not done. We're not in a state of decay. We're actually growing. So let's start cranking up the hormones. Let's start cranking up the things that we need to do to improve my muscles, my bone density. I'm not done. And that's an important, <laughs> your body just, it's your brain, your body are waiting for you to tell, tell it what to do. So I think that's fantastic. <laughs> 